All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this, the September training session and speaker practice session. We are just going to start with a little icebreaker. Um, it would be great if we could see your faces so we can all interact. We can be on mute, but let's see our faces. That would be great. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, hello. Yes. Fantastic. So, icebreaker. You're doing this soapbox talk. If you had to describe it to this, uh, you know, let's see. What would we call that? Are they millennials? No. Uh, 21st generation? No. I don't know what to call them. Let's call them the social media generation. <laughs> or the emoji generation. So, if you had to describe your talk to a 17-year-old, using emojis you only allow three emojis three emojis use three emojis to describe your talk on the telegram group i'm looking i'm watching let's see three emojis that describes your talk just emojis on the telegram group let's see oh i haven't had any yet everybody's thinking hard Three emojis that best describes your talk. My speakers are not responding though. Okay. Who's done the thumbs up? <laughs> Who did thumbs up? I want three emojis, not one. If you've just joined us, you're welcome. Please have your videos on. We'll put ourselves on mute if we're not speaking, but let's have our videos on so we can connect with each other. Okay. Elsie, was that you? With the capsule? Who's doing the caps? I want three, not just one. You can do three. You don't use the large emojis. Just use the regular ones. And tell me, and see if I can decipher it from emojis what your talk is all about. That's okay, me, Dr. Rebecca. Okay, Professor Akere. Oh, okay. I know it's something to do with plants. I can see the plant emoji. And this smiley emoji is kind of sweaty. Hmm. You need one more emoji, Dr. Uh, Professor Kerry. Once you've posted the emoji, just let me know. Because it's not showing up everyone's names. So I can see who's done it. Okay, Becky. So, Dr. Rebecca. You've only done one now. I need three. Okay, Dr. Kemi. I like that. So it's something to do with fruits, rats, and people. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Farmer Stell. Okay, I won't say yours because I can I know what the title is. I it's yours that I can remember. I know it's to do with antibiotics. Antibiotic resistance, uh huh. Okay. Uh, Moyolua. I can't see your emoji. Let's know. Let's know. It's not easy to describe without words, isn't it? If you need to talk talk about your present your topic. yeah so this helps you to think of a simple way to communicate your science it's part of science communication simple ways to communicate your science because your science you know to a lay person might be complex but how do you communicate it in a simple way so you know these three emojis okay so rebecca has done three i'm trying to work out what it is is this something to do with viruses or flu and temperature. Hmm. 
Anyway, we'll see maybe at the end whether looking at your topics, whether your emojis matched uh, your title and described it accurately. Josephine, okay. Again, something to do with plants and the family and animals. All right, okay. All right, that's fine. Thank you guys for participating. That was just a little icebreaker to get the juices flowing. Now I am going to hand over to our speaker for the day. Dr. Elias, over to you. You are on mute. You can unmute yourself. Good yeah. afternoon, and thank you for having me do this talk. I'm trying to bring on my slides, but while I'm doing that, um, it's good to be here. My name is Simi Atelias, has just been introduced. I'm a member of the team, the Soapbox Science Lagos and um, the November team. I came about Soapbox Science in 2019 when I'd been invited to um, apply to present, and I did. My experience was so awesome, I refused to leave. I decided to join the team. And um, I hope you're going to have as much fun as I've been having. It's a bit just to help you along the way towards your presentations. I have looked at the array of speakers that we have for this year, and I can see very accomplished, beautiful ladies who are doing great work. And we are pleased and proud that you decided to share your work through Soapbox Science November team. So we just want to do a little bit of fine tuning. Most of the things you're probably aware of. And um, I'm looking forward to an interactive session and hoping that um, you will find something interesting, informative and educative as well. So we're going to be talking in the next um, few minutes about communicating your science effectively, the Sobok science way. I hope you can all hear me. Perfectly, yes. All right, thank you. So let's go. Communicating your science effectively. You've all been doing a great job um, in your different laboratories. And this is a time to bring to the layman or woman on the street or lay girl on the street what you have been contributing to science. When we say science in Sobok science, we're actually talking about the STEM. Sciences, technology, engineering, medicine, and mathematics. So when I say science, please don't think of... Um, you know, eliminated you at any point. We're just using it as a generic term. So as I just did, the first thing we'd expect of you is to introduce yourself to the audience. In the this year, 2021, because of the pandemic, we're still going to be running an online show. So you may not be able to see your audience, but be sure that they're there. Okay, so you need to engage with them. You need to let them know why understand why they should trust you enough to spend time with us on Sobok Science in come November 2021. So introduce yourself to them, show them why they should um, spend time with us, as I said. You must exude confidence, but no arrogance, please. People tend to um, abhor arrogance. Yes, show that it's your topic. It's you are the expert in that area. Show your passion. Let them understand um, what you're putting across. Let them also come on the journey with you, okay? Present a story, your work, your, your accomplishments in a story way, in a way that is engaging, that they would want to come along with you. You are the expert, so you should be comfortable in your skin, in what you're presenting, okay? You must also understand that the audience that you're going to be presenting to will be very varied, okay? from the very young, and we've had a four-year-old to five-year-old before, 
to the most ignorant of science, okay? To those who may know some science, but not your aspect of science, to those who are still contemplating whether to support their daughter in, um, about going into something science or not, to grandparents who would wish, oh, if I had a daughter like this, I would want, you know, you understand? So your, your audience is going to be very much varied, especially on the internet. So think about the different backgrounds. Also consider bringing in some people who you think may be able, may be interested in listening to you, okay? People in your community, in your neighborhood, in your church or mosque, in anywhere. Okay, that's not, I mean, so back science is not about talking to the converted. It's about talking to those you want to bring into the fold of science, about people who are still, you know, sitting on the fence, undecided. It might just be what you have to say to them that is going to make them want to go into science and make it a lifelong career choice. So invite those kind of people as well. Is there something in your talk for everybody? Okay, don't think that you will only be talking to secondary school children, you know, high school pupil, students. No, think about it could even be somebody already in the university, but who does not know in which direction to go. Okay, I had recently someone um, who was going to get into two, second year of university applying to change from physiology to mathematics. It could have been something that swayed the love, the, that arose the passion in that person. So these are the kind of people, just think about the large variety of people that you may be influencing from your talk. Now, some tips that I picked up while researching um, for this presentation and for which I also have to thank our um, team lead already for her assistance. One, Slow and steady wins the race, we all know that. In communicating signs, and especially on soapbox signs, it, it's not a sprint. You don't have to go 1,000 words per minute. I ordinarily, I speak very fast, okay? But for the purpose of this discussion, I have practiced to bring down my voice, my, the rate at which I speak. This is what we'd like for you to do. If you speak slower than 100 words per minute, see if we can bring it up a little. If you speak at 200 words per minute, what are the ways in which you can bring it down slowly? Because this research has shown that a lot more people will retain more about what you have to say if you're speaking at around 100 words per minute, okay? So just measure yourself, know who you are, and then you know, try and work with what you have but know that we don't want a sprint. We want people to listen, understand, and take something away from the talk. You could have effective pauses, just like I think I have been doing, okay? You can ask questions. Although you're not, you cannot see them physically, always remember that they are there. Ask questions, pause, as if you're waiting for the answer before you then go on. Do not say or ask, Oh, so what color is this? Oh, it must be purple. No, you did not give them the opportunity to engage, okay? So when you ask a question, what time of the year do birds fly from the North Pole to the South Pole, for instance? So you pause and then you provide the answer. And if you wish to keep the answer as a teaser, until the end of your, of your talk, that is also all right. So do not talk at the audience. No audience likes for you to treat them as though they know nothing. Much as we've said that, I mean, your audience is going to be varied. There'll be those who know nothing about science. There'll be so, those who are so very young, they really are not expected to know much about science. Nobody wants you to just keep talking and rattling and not giving them time to engage. So do not talk at them. Ask questions, just as we did this afternoon. Flora provided an icebreaker through which all of us had to think. Even I was thinking, which three emoticons will best describe what I'm talking about? 
Okay, so provide an icebreaker and always remember they can see you. So your personality must be personable. They must be able to relate to you, smile as necessary, make your talk as simple and interactive as possible. And where possible, if you can, describe a simple experiment that they can also relate to, which relates to what you're talking about, all right? Next, break it down. We are all scientists here. We are all in medicine, mathematics, engineering, and so on. But the people we're trying to bring in probably have no idea. Perhaps they even just studied my native language, okay, in the university. So you want to break it down. You want to de -jagonize. But how do you do this? Already introduced me to this editor online. Obgoa text editor, okay? Or Obgoa five text editor. And I would like to call, to ask you to go online and look at that, um, to that um, website, to that app, at that app. Imagine you want to communicate your science and you only have 100, well, 10, 100 words. 10, 100 words. We all know that 10, 100 is what? 1,000. But the editor says that we are not even allowed to use 1,000. It's too big. Imagine, 1,000 is such a large word. You shouldn't throw it at people when you are having a public engagement like this. So I will show you some more, and you will tell me whether the things in the next slide that you can provide some other words for, okay? Just go to this and then come back to that. Now, imagine that you're not allowed to use the following words in your presentation. Effect, impact, conduct, or even conduct, comparison, interaction, resistance, bacteria, parasite, immune, reproduction, diabetes, wastes. I think I've hit everybody, all seven of you. You are not allowed to use these words, yet you want to communicate your work. What words are you going to use? Think about that. So, Let's look at this paragraph together. To see how fast eye cells are being made, I am putting stuff into baby water animals when they are between two and three days old. This stuff goes into new cells when they are made. Later in the same day, I kill the babies so they will stop growing and I can look at their eyes up close. I can make the new cells with stuff in them turn pretty colors so I can tell them from older cells. If the water animals with an eye problem make the same number of new cells as normal water animals in the same time, then the eye problem is not caused by cells being made slower. Who speaks like that? Who talks like that? So bug signs will make you break your science down even to this level. I had put some yellow highlights on some words because even reading this paragraph myself, I was thinking, so pardon me, if I had to, if I'd been the one that put this together, would I be writing, putting stuff Baby water animals, kill the babies, look up close, turn pretty colors, tell them apart, and so on. Wouldn't I be using words like euthanasia? They were euthanized. I looked under the microscope, you know, and things and, and on and on like that. So these are hints. These are things just to make you think about what, how you're going to break your signs into smaller bits for everybody to understand. 
So when we say dejagonize, does it mean dumb it down your work? Absolutely not. What we want you to do is to distill your work by using shared words which will allow your audience to appreciate your work. As I said earlier, realize that you will have a varied um, number or, or different types of people in the audience that you will be needing to communicate with. So there must be something in your talk for everybody. So you're not dumbing down your work. You just want to con you know, communicate in a way that people will understand and relate with, and that they want to continue sitting with you to relate with you, spend time with us. So do we have any comments so far? Anybody? Anything you want to say? Hi. Hello. Sorry. I don't know if there's option to, okay, sorry, there's option to raise hands. I just noticed that, sorry. You can go, just please go ahead, Esther. Okay, yeah, no, thank you so much for this. I think this is um, a very um, interesting conversation that we keep having quite um, routinely. Just yesterday, I was at an event where we're having the same conversation about how we, how we communicate for awareness. Um, and what I just wanted to say was that one exercise, I, I was at a, a workshop once and an exercise that we did, um, it was relating to antimicrobial resistance, like the topic I'm given in this particular instance, but it was something very similar, sim simple, where they just said, how do you communicate this in your local language? And, you know, it was a workshop that had people from different African countries, different yes. tribes, and just, it was, it sounded so simple, but it, it just really showed you that you can be speaking at this global level and talking about global impact and, you know, the importance of this thing, but they're like, communicate this in your local language. That's all I need you to do. And everyone was like, wow, how do you translate it? Not only in your language, but in jargon in your language as well. Thank but in you. a scientific way, yeah. Thank you very much for that. So we now, we now begin to think about communicating our work in simple terms, even as low as making it in our local language so that even if we should at one point or the other decide to take this even to a lower level because it's quite possible what we did in 2019 was to go into a shopping mall and we had people coming in there. We could easily have been asked to explain what we're talking about in the local language. So think about it, ladies. So now, and then note that she used antibacterial. Our app is not going to allow you to do that. So please think about another word for antibacterial. So props, let's talk props. Props can be made, they can be shared, they can be bought, all right? You must choose the correct prop that represents what you're trying to portray, okay? The prop should not detract from your presentation. It should actually help you to convey the information. It does not have to be expensive, okay? It could be from your laboratory. There's a DNA um, modem. It could be from your home. These tubes are, were used to present blood vessels, a larger ve blood vessel, a smaller one, okay? This was a bust. This lady was talking about the breast and she brought the bust. So it could be something, these were tubes from just, I mean, from my house, okay? Rubber tubings I would normally ordinarily just use um, to spray water in, in the garden or something like that, so cut and used effectively. So you must know what prop is going to give visual to your talk and add to what you're presenting, not detract away from it. Again, that up close here, these balloons were used to present at a point the heart and then the blood vessel. And within these balloons, we had confetti, which when this individual suffered from a cerebrovascular accident, large words, not allowed, suffered from stroke, the blood vessel, you know, burst 
and the confetti came out as though blood was coming out. And of course, the younger members of the audience loved it. They went away with what was left of uh, balloons when we had finished. Again, that's the DNA. So, ladies, your props must be used effectively. They must be representative of what you are presenting. It could be diagrams, it could be pictures, it could be anything from your environment. Okay, so I have this again. We could look, you could look it up after this discussion. You want to describe the appearance, function, and bonds associated with each level of protein. There's a primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. What can you use? Oh, yes, we can use a necklace. A necklace with the beads. You can join so for them to show the primary structure. You can use it to show the secondary structure, tertiary, as well as quaternary structure. So these are the ways that you go about looking for props. And most often, they're just there already. You know, all you need to do is think about it and see how it's going to enhance your work. So next. As I said earlier, your audience is there. You will not be able to see them because it's not a physical event this year. Learn to smile. Don't be arrogant. Show your passion and keep your audience engaged, okay? As much as they like you, they would want to hear from you. In fact, if it was possible, I'm sure they would also ask that we extend your time, okay? Next. We've gone through. The next thing is to end well. All right. You've engaged them for 10 minutes because that's what time you will have. But the way you end your talk is quite as important as the way you began, if not more so, because that's what the audience will take away. End on a positive note. Emphasize the importance of the work that you're doing, that you're pre presenting to them. If possible, if there are anecdotes that you think your audience will relate with, you know, bring them up at this point. If you had begun your talk with a question, like I said um, at the beginning of my presentation, um, when during the year do birds flock from the North Pole to the South Pole? You know, just imagining that I know the answer to that as well. So this is the time to present your answer. Okay, or if you love, give them an assignment, something that you know it will be easy for them to relate with in their environment. Okay, oh, that vegetable that you love so much, do you know it could actually help you get better? Do you know that it's not all bacteria that are bad? Which ones would be useful in helping you to accomplish? this task or the other. Something that you think they would be able to relate to. And they go away with it, you know, and each time they remember that question, they will also remember your talk. And above all, always remember to thank your audience. So I'll just take it, I mean, pause a little here and ask again if there's someone in the audience who has something that they would like to share at this point. Maybe just for in two sentences, please. Thank you. Anyone? There's something that you would like us to, yes. Akhiri, Dr. Akhiri, please. Please unmute. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for the lecture. Uh, I've been trying for some time now to see if I can communicate my science to my six and seven year old nephews. And I have tried and tried to break it down as much as I can. And I find myself trying to explain the term first and then use it later. Is that permitted? Yes, that would be nice, but we would also, we'll still take a little bit more hints um, as we go on. And then also from the other members of a team, 
Yes, but it, it's not going to be the same thing as you do in your thesis where you will do uh, the um, definition of terms because the terms themselves that you want to break down to them is what we want you to break down. All right? But there, there's some the other things that you can learn. Like, for example, there is no way you may not be able to break down something like hydrogen. So you may end up saying Mr. Hydrogen. Okay? So that may be acceptable. So they know that, okay, Mr. Hydrogen comes um, along with the gas that we breathe in. And when Mr. Hydrogen marries Mrs. Oxygen, they become a family. I don't know. So thank you for your question. Uh, we'll, we'll still have more insight as we go on. Thank you. So now about your videos. Can you still hear me, everybody? Yes. Yes. OK, fine. Okay. Thank you. So looking good in your video. We've seen some of you, I mean, we asked you to, you know, um, you know, bring your video on so that we can see you. We saw some looking very um, nice and good, with good background light and all that. That's very good. So when you're preparing your video, and you will have to prepare a video because you, your talk is 10 minutes, but we know anything can go wrong with internet. So we would require for you to record a 10 minute video of your presentation. So that should something go awry on that day, we're going to put that on. And also we'll have something to put like a teaser online before that day. So preparing a good video, do not keep natural light behind you. So if I had been sitting directly, um, in front of a, 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 an open glass window, for example, the, the rays of light would make me look like this lady with the bad lighting, okay? So don't keep that behind you when you're making your video. Try and find a place in your room, your office, or somewhere that will show you the best in the video, like this other lady. Same lady, different lighting, okay? How, if you have um, a, a, an open light, like a sun rays coming into your office or lab or where you want to record, have it in front of you. So um, that will make you look more like this lady with excellent light, makes you really ap look approachable. The people who will be viewing your video will be interested in listening to what you have to say. But if your face was hidden or you had a lot of junk in your background, nobody would want to watch your video. So if you have a lot of natural light in, light in your room, do not combine that with an overhead light, okay? You could sit at an angle, for example, for five degrees to the window, and that would give a dark background only on one side and the other side would lighten your face. But if, if you have very little natural light in the room, and you're going to have to use a lamp, put the lamp facing the opposing wall so that the light bounces off the wall to your face. It will enhance your face as well. You could use a backdrop or a collapsible uh, white and black bag as is done for photo shoots. But hey, sisters, this is not a photo shoot, so you're under no pressure, okay? Just use anything in your environment that will enhance your video, okay? What we're interested in is for the audience to engage with you, see you, and hear you well, all right? So some of our past speakers have had this to say. Use a plain shower curtain as a backdrop, Unless you tell, nobody will know, really. So that could work. Or if you're presenting something that has to do with the plants, you could use your back garden, a quiet back garden for an agricultural research talk. One of our speakers did that last year and the video was excellent. So you can use that to record your sessions. And as I said, you will all have to please 
submit a pre-recorded session, 10 minutes max, in case we have issues with internet on the main day. So now, how do you sound better in your video? You need a very good microphone or headphones. And I saw one or two ladies with that when they showed their videos. You need a quiet environment. You also need to avoid being a, in a large room that will echo back at you, okay? We'll talk about this a little bit more, but you need to work on your vocal projection. You need to improve the volume of your voice. And you also need to learn to do what is termed throwing your voice. Okay, you've, we've all been to the theater at one point or the other, and if you haven't, you've watched films of, of um, actors and actresses preparing to go on show. So as educationists as well, you need to learn to project your voice for the maximum effect. So wear a headset, speak directly into the microphone of your phone or your camera. And there, there are softwares online that can help you example of the city, okay? So all these are tips to ensure that your video sounds better. When your voice is properly projected, then your video will be, your, the audio of your video will be more likable. So how do you train your voice? Have you considered that the tongue and some of the other muscles in the mouth are actually skeletal muscles? just like your deltoid muscle, your triceps, and all those other big muscles in the body that you exercise all the time. Who remembers to exercise the tongue? Not me. I didn't even realize that some of the things that we do are actually exercising the tongue muscles. For example, you want to exercise the tongue, you can say words like, or R, 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 you can say S, 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 Tha, Tha, Tha. Those are ways of exercising the tongue muscles. And for warm up, before you begin the, the exercise, you can hum to yourself. We all know how to hum. Mm -hmm. La, 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 la. Things like that are like warming, warm up exercise for the um, tongue exercise that you will want to go on to. To help with articulation, yawning is also considered a form of exercise. So whether it's physiologically induced or you have to call it up as a form of exercise, let's try and do this at least 10 times for 10 days, you know, each time, don't just yawn once and go away, yawn, see if you can do it 10 times and then do that daily at least for 10 days. Now, leap throughs, leap throughs. I didn't even realize this was an exercise. You know, I don't know how many people who do it. I, I don't usually do it, but I've had to try and practice it. Um, this. I'm not good at it, but I know some of you do it. It's a form of exercise. Tongue thrills, the tongue. Try and roll your tongue and make it go like that. And then projecting your voice from the diaphragm, learning to speak from the diaphragm. That helps as well. Okay, we'll send you some doc documentation to guide you in doing this. Now to improve your voice volume as well, you need to do diaphragmatic breathing at least for five minutes, three to four times a day. What do you need to do? Find a good posture or lie on your back, whichever one is easy for you. Put a hand on your abdomen and another one on your chest. Not pressing, I'll just put it there. And then breathe in, maximally through your nose and exhale through your mouth. When you do that, you will feel the movement in your abdomen because of the descent of a diaphragm. And if you do this for five minutes, three to four times a day, you will be helping to improve your voice. 
And then good posture when you are preparing your, your video. Don't slouch because that will reduce the intraabdominal space into which the diaphragm should de um, descend. Okay? Have a good posture. It helps you to be able to project a good volume of voice and also um, to inflect when you need to do that for emphasis. Now let's do this together. Although you may not unmute, just do it with me. Um, let's look at this. I'm not driving to the beach tomorrow. I'm not driving to the beach tomorrow. I'm not driving to the beach tomorrow. I am not driving to the beach tomorrow. We said the same thing four times, but four different meanings. I'm sure, as I mean, the cadre of women that I have here, you know the differences in the meaning because of inflection, because of where the emphasis in the statements were. So these are things that you can do to improve the volume of your voice. You can also learn to inflect and put emphasis where you want focus to be, all right? So before we go on, anything about video, anything about um, the volume of the voice and all that we may want to share, two sentences, thank you. Anybody? Come on, ladies, let's go. About the video, about the voice, your experience. Okay, so we'll go on. We're almost getting to the end. So if you have questions and contributions, we'll take them. Now, with everything that we do in life, practice, practice, practice makes us perfect. Practice on your family, just like um, Professor Harry said, she's been practicing on her six and seven year old nephews. If they can understand her, I'm sure everybody else can. Practice on your friends, on your colleagues, on the young and the old. In fact, on anyone who is willing to listen, all you need of the time is 10 minutes max. And if you're not able to stay the entire period, that could be a pointer that you need to work more on your communication, all right? So practice physically or call somebody up in Wales or somebody in Nairobi or even in Abuja and practice virtually because this year's presentation is still going to be virtual. So go on Instagram to them. Please don't publish because we're going to need to publish as Soapbox Science Lagos November 2021. But you know, just practice, try out everything so that when that day comes, you will just be shining as you know you can shine. So last note, so bug science is direct, is from you to the audience. There is no middleman, all right? As we said during the last um, presentation, there's no PowerPoint, there's no lecture theater, there's no public address system. It's just you standing on your virtual soapbox. Look at this audience. See how very dry. Look at this young lady, okay? If you cannot explain what you're talking about, she's not gonna take anything away from your stand, okay? So look, these are pictures that um, this lady doctor had brought and I can't say, but I know she had something also that she was using to engage the audience. I know for sure that this young lady had gone on to um, study something in science, um, something magical, kinesiology. Who would have thought? But from listening, she had gone round and round and then she made up her mind. She had originally been thinking, I want to be a nurse, but at the end, she thought of something else, kinesiology, and that's what she's studying now. So it's just you on your virtual soapbox, but I know you're going to be very, um, you're going to shine. And therefore, I'm asking you to just go out, have fun, and let soapbox science deliver 
your work to the world. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I think somebody's raised their hand, uh, Kemi. Yeah. You want to go ahead and up? make your comment or ask what you want to ask? Lua Kemi. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the presentation. Um, you mentioned that we'll be um, asked to submit a video. So I want to know, are we going to be given a deadline? Um, I just want to know when the deadline for the submission 